We're driving a Chevrolet Corvette convertible. Honestly, the world doesn't need another review of the C8 Corvette, but I'd like to make a memory. So I'm gonna review the Corvette convertible with my five-year-old daughter. Are you excited? Yeah. High five me. But first, information explosion. Sweetie, how do you feel about doing a review without mommy today? Good. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> Sorry, sweetie, you're not needed. Let's start things off, interior. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to drive a fair number of Corvettes, and the interior in the C8, especially this one here, um, is outstanding by historical standards. What do you think, sweetie? Do you like the inside of this car? And if so, what do you like about it? That's true, the material quality in here is much better than older versions of the Corvette. And one of the things I like, and I bet you like too, red seat belts. From a functionality standpoint, uh, most of the stuff works just fine, but this uh, centerpiece here, this long line of buttons, I suspected that this might be an ergonomic nightmare when I first saw the Corvette C8, and true enough, it's a really bad way to lay out buttons. So yesterday we were driving, and she wasn't quite sure how to turn up the heat for her side, so I was trying to show her, and Finding the right button while driving is a I don't know, nightmare is kind of overselling it, but it's not good. Our car has the optional GT2 sport seats and they hold me in place really well. They're not the uh, ergonomic perfection that I felt in the Acura NSX. They're about $1,500. I do like them though. One of the tricks with having uh, my five-year-old aboard is that we have to get a booster seat in here. So you'll be happy to know that her seat is all the way back to give more than adequate uh, distance between her and the airbag, which is also deactivated because there's a seat sensor, but you can never be too careful. For the rare Corvette driver that wants to bring a child in a booster seat, uh, I would maybe skip the optional seats because they're a little bit more snug and a little bit more width might make this fit easier, although it's, it's really not so bad. Let's talk family friendliness. Item number one is cargo space. There's a little more than 12 cubic feet between the front and rear trunks. What about getting inside, sweetie pie? How hard was it for you to get into and out of the Corvette? Yeah, it's pretty easy because the car sits pretty low. Sitting in that seat, can you see out okay? Can you even see the road? Well, that's one of the big advantages of having the mid-engine layout. This Corvette has the engine behind us instead of in front of us, so you can see ahead a little bit better. Yeah, in some ways, I would say that the Corvette convertible that we're driving is sort of family friendly, at least for the two people in your family that can drive in it. Yay! Do you think mommy is sad right now that she doesn't get to drive with us in the Corvette? <laughs> Just a little sad. Hi. Rear window tests, kind of different than we normally do. Armrest test. So I'm driving in an eight and four here and there's two very comfortable perches for me to put my elbows on. I could cruise like this for a very long time. How's your elbow? Good, Good? comfortable? Two elbows up, can you do that for me? Yeah. Two elbows up, give me two elbows up. Uh, yeah. You want to give me an elbow in the middle? Yeah. Boop. Right. Oh, very nice. That's your best elbow. <laughs> What's your best elbow? Tell us in the comments section. <laughs> Maybe it's their left elbow. It could be their left elbow. That's a good point. <laughs> hey, have you subscribed to our channel? If you haven't, please do. At 100,000 subs, I'm going to review a windowless white van style. Talking about the style of the C8 Corvette, I don't know, you've heard plenty of people talk about it before me. All I'll say is that it looks very much like a Corvette. I'm not sure if it's beautiful, but it certainly has presence. One complaint, I wish there was a little bit more distinction between the convertible and the coupe. That's what I think. What does my daughter think? How do you feel about how this car looks from the outside? I like it. What do you like about it? I guess Oh yeah, this picture right here with the little flag on it. Yeah, and the color outside, do you know what it's called? Yeah. Torch red. Oh yeah, it's not. Oh. Oh my gosh, how nice would that be if this was a pink Corvette? 
but then people would think I was Angeline and I don't want any confusion. If you are curious what I'm driving or flying between YouTube videos, please give me a follow over on Instagram, in motion. When we picked up the Corvette yesterday, the first thing we did was drive about an hour and a half from work back to my house. And man, this thing cruises so comfortably. Yeah, what do you think, sweetie pie? Is this um, more or less comfortable than the Jeep we drove to get it? I agree, I think this is a much more comfortable drive. One of the wonderful things about moving to the mountains is that everywhere we drive, it's a windy road. I'm gonna go through this corner with a little bit of zippy attitude and talk about the steering, which... Zippy zappy. Zippy zappy, whee! Wee. I would say it is accurate. Very precise, but also a little bit aloof. Uh-huh. I think there'd probably be more to discover in a track environment, but I'm just driving with my daughter and I've got a lot to live for, as does she, so we're just gonna keep it mellow. If you noticed in the information explosion, the transmission is an eight-speed dual clutch, and that is very quick reactions, very smooth. Oh, yeah. The eight-speed is great uh, when you're moving. One of the things I have noticed, though, is that the dual clutch doesn't like to slip in first gear, so it kind of wants to be going or not going. If you're creeping into, like, a parking lot or you're parking your car for a Cars and Coffee, it's a little bit awkward. Not extremely awkward, just a little bit. And then, of course, the V8 is awesome. It sounds nice, especially with the top open. You know what? Let me stop here for just a quick second. This seems like a great place. Yep, because there's no sun that can shine in my eyes. That's right. Our test car has the Z51 package, which means it has a quicker final drive ratio, which enables it to go zero to 60 in less than three seconds. And I think we should probably test that out. Sweetie, do you want to go really fast? Yeah. Put your head against the uh, headrest. Ready? Count me down. Woo! Was that so fun? Yeah. <laughs> ha! Huh. Oh, and it sounds really good when we do that too. Wow. So we'll go a little bit quick, not too quick, just a little quick. There are no surprises here, but the Corvette is tons of fun to drive on a road like this. The speed and cornering prowess are in no way surprising, but one of the elements that I really like about the C8 are the brakes. It's a brake by wire system, and if you've ever used brake by wire in like a hybrid or something, you know how, um, how dicey some of the systems can be. This one is great. In fact, I can't imagine almost any driver would think, oh, there's something different about this braking system. One neat attribute of brake by wire is that they can change brake feel depending on drive mode. If anything, I am a brake snob and the C8 brakes great. Two thumbs up? Yeah. yeah. Two thumbs. In total, I like driving the Corvette. What do you think? Do you like riding in the Corvette? Yeah. The best car she's ever ridden in. Wow, good job, Chevy. That's a pretty good lead in. Emotion factor. What is the emotion factor of the Chevrolet Corvette? Well, I mean, I think the emotion factor is strong both visually and from a performance perspective. Uh, and for me, it's extra emotive because I'm uh, sharing this experience with my daughter. But for maximum emotion, should we go really fast? Yeah. Okay. Best car ever! I'm feeling emotionally moved. If you're feeling emotionally moved to buy a Chevrolet Corvette of your very own, check the Kelly Blue Book listing link in the description below. Remarks! Whee! So we're driving the convertible Corvette, and I like driving it, but I don't think I would get the convertible for a few reasons. Number one, it costs $7,500 extra, which isn't a ton of money in the total price of the car, but the view is essentially the same as if you buy the coupe, which has the removable roof panel. It also adds 100 pounds to the curb weight, and the convertible mechanism back there covers over the engine, and I'd rather see the engine. So I probably wouldn't go convertible. You may feel differently. What I do like about the convertible top though is that it's a hard top and it keeps the sound pretty quiet inside with the top up. 
You can also operate it in about 16 seconds up to speeds of 30 miles per hour. So it's a fine operating top. Again, I just, uh, I'm a fan of a removable roof panel. I used to own a Honda Del Sol, that's probably why. Good, now we won't have to look at the sun much anymore. Passing the Camry, that's not surprising. I'm driving the vent. Cha 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 chow. Oh yeah, I mentioned the Honda Del Sol I own. So one of the things I would always do is try to uh, perfect the right combination of like window positions for the calmest cabin with the roof open. And here we can do the exact same thing because we've got that back window there. What I've noticed is in the up position, it uh, moves the wind more around your body, but for maximum quiet and comfort, having that lowered position is great. Side windows up. The buffeting inside the cockpit is not bad at all. In fact, yesterday when we were driving on the freeway for a really long time, I was still able to hear my daughter speak. The standard eight inch infotainment system works just fine. The knob is kind of obscured by the steering wheel for me, but overall functionality is uh, no big deal. I'll also note that for 2021, they've added wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which pairs nicely with the uh, wireless charging thing back here that I don't know if I have an arm that can actually go that direction, but that's where that is. Speaking of the square steering wheel, aesthetically, I don't like it. Uh, functionally, it's fine. Our car has two features that'll keep you from ripping the nose off of your Corvette. One is an optional camera uh, that shows the front view, and then the other is a nose lift feature. It'll raise the front of the car two inches, um, and it can do that up to like 24 miles per hour, and it only takes like three seconds to get that done. Uh, though I have still, even in the uh, raised position, managed to scrape the underside of the nose just a little bit. Here's an observation that's going to alight the comment section on fire. The drive mode selector takes a lot of effort to turn. <laughs> See, the problem is I've got these little journalist hands. I uh, spend all day typing instead of doing actual work, so this will probably be easier for people who really work. Oh, and one thing I've always noted about Corvettes, and it's also present in the C8, is that fuel economy is outrageously good. I've, I've never quite gotten my head around how you can build a car that's as fast as this is and also as efficient. See, see everybody, I'm driving the C8 for the planet. You're welcome, planet. Pretty view, look. Whoa, mountains. So if you were looking at the Corvette, but you wanted to examine some of your other options, uh, you might consider the Porsche 911 or uh, Lexus LC500. That's a beautiful car. Maybe a Jaguar F-Type, or if you have a lot of money to spend an Acura and SX. Although all of those are either going to be more expensive or less powerful, the combination of performance and uh, value, I don't think there's anything that tops the Corvette. Well, the other thing I'm gonna add too, do not forget that there's a Corvette Z06 coming. So even though this thing's already outrageously fast, more power and more speed is a coming. Have I missed any remarks? Probably. If so, tell me in the comments section, label them remarks, get in on the game. Oh, hey, sweetie, I haven't had you say the segment title yet. Do you want to say the last segment title? All you have to say is you have to point at the camera and yell, synopsis. Synopsis. Yay, good job, sweetie. In thinking of the essence of the C8 Corvette, it's under $59,000 for a base coupe, which is comparatively inexpensive. And me and my daughter are having a really good time, even though it's not the priciest version of a mid-engine supercar. To me, and maybe to you, the C8 Corvette is the summertime trip to Dairy Queen of supercars. Do you have a better synopsis? Tell us in the comment section. The child's yawning. Perhaps I should uh, go a little faster. Whee! Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. At 100,000 subs, I'm going to review a windowless white van. If you're curious what I'm doing when I'm not driving this car around, give me a follow over on Instagram. What do you think? Was it good having some daddy-daughter time? Yes. Should we go fast again? Yes. Yes. But first, give me a high five. Uh, and you too. Come get your high five. Yes. Uh. Oh, well, I like that. And do you know what my favorite part is of, uh, about, about driving this car, sweetie? Driving it with you. Give me a hand. I'm so tired. You're so tired? Yeah, maybe you should go back. Okay. Whee! I'll go a little bit faster. Whee!